In the last video, we walked through a case example of a single computational unit using a sigmoid activation. However, there are many other activation functions that can be employed in neural networks as well. In this video, I'll introduce two other activation functions commonly seen with NLP tasks, the hyperbolic tangent and the rectified linear unit. I'll work through case examples of both, and then I'll compare them alongside the sigmoid activation we already learned about. We saw in the last video that there are many different types of activation functions that we can choose from when implementing our neural networks. Some of the most common ones that we see in text processing problems include softmax and sigmoid, which we've seen previously. Sigmoid is used with binary logistic regression and softmax is used with multinomial logistic regression, as well as ones we haven't discussed yet, like rectified linear unit and hyperbolic tangent. The hyperbolic tangent function is often abbreviated as TANH, and it's a variant of the sigmoid function that ranges from negative 1 to positive 1, as shown in the equation here. It's easily differentiable and generally reaches convergence more quickly than the sigmoid function. We can look at the case example from the previous video, and if you're watching these videos out of order, you may want to review the video discussing building blocks for neural networks to see how we got our z value of 0.78. If we want to use a TANH activation instead of the sigmoid, we just substitute it in, pass our z value through the TANH function, and get an activation value of 0.653. So this is a little bit smaller value than we saw with the sigmoid function. And we would go ahead and output that to the next layer, or if this unit is in the output layer, that would just be our output value. And the rectified linear unit, on the other hand, abbreviated as RELU, is pretty different from sigmoid and TANH. However, it's extremely simple to implement. Your output value, y, is just going to end up being the maximum of 0 and your z value. This makes it very close to a linear function, and it also makes it very quick and easy to compute. Here's our same case example once again. So we're back at the point where we have our z value, and we've replaced TANH with RELU now. So since we're using ReLU this time, we just need to take the maximum of our z value in 0. So that's the maximum of 0 0.78 and 0. The maximum of those two values is 0 0.78. So that'll be our activation value, and we'll go ahead and pass it along as our output. So now we've looked at three common activation functions, and the course textbook provides these nice graphs to plot them out and show how each activation function differs. It's pretty normal to try out multiple activation functions as you develop your neural network and see what works best for your specific task. This is just one of many possible hyperparameters that you can tune. Without knowing the details of a specific task, ReLU may be the best activation function to start with, because in general it tends to facilitate faster learning while requiring fewer computational resources.